Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video I'm going to explain how to save your own assets to work with the Home Builder Library. I'm going to be focusing on how to save decorations and materials. This will allow you to drag and drop your own assets into the scene to quickly add decorative assets and try out different colors and material finishes. After we save some assets, I'll show you how to package them up so you can easily distribute them as a Home Builder Library Pack. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Now before we get started, come up here to the About interface and check for updates. Make sure you're at least on version 3.0.4. But as long as you are, then you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and start saving some assets to the Decorations Library. And Decorations are just standard Blender objects. You can save any Blender object to this library. But I'm going to go and create a new category to save my own objects to their own category. So here we'll go and select the Create New Category button. And I'll call this My Objects and click OK. So now we have a new category that we can start saving our objects to. And to keep this simple, I'm going to go and just create a monkey head here. So here we have Suzanne. And to save this to the library, we just need to make sure that we have it selected. And then we're going to come to this menu and click Save Selected Object to Library. It's going to let us know the name of the object that we currently have selected, which is Suzanne. We'll click OK. And there it's saved. Our object. So now we can just drag this in and this will work for all future projects. Now it's important to know that the thumbnail that's created is taken from the view that you're currently looking at the object. And so if I wanted to take it from this view here, I'm going to go ahead and click Save Selected Object to Library. And you may get this message that the file is not saved. Just make sure you have Auto Save turned on and click OK. And that will save our object from the view that we're currently looking at at our asset. So that works well if you're just saving a single object to the library, but you can save multiple objects as one asset to the library. And the way that we do that is by creating a empty. So here if we go to our empty, we'll go and create a plain access. And so here in our outliner we see we have the empty Suzanne and Suzanne 1. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to parent these objects to this new empty. The way that we do that is just by dragging these onto the empty. So if we click hold, we can hold shift to parent this. And so hold shift, and there we have it. And you can see that we have this hierarchy where we have our empty object and then our Suzanne heads. Now we're going to click on the base point of our object. And the object that we have selected is going to be the name of the asset. So let's go and change this to two Suzannes. And now we'll go ahead and click the Save Selected Object to Library, making sure that we have our base point selected. And here we can see that the object name is Two Suzannes, and it will allow us to include the child objects in this one asset. So if we click that, it says it's going to include the two child objects that we have. And then we'll click OK, and there we have it. We have our two monkey heads that we can add into the scene. Next, let's go ahead and save this Marshall AMP to our library. And one thing that I want to point out is that when you save something to the library, it's going to use the object origin as the drop point. And the object origin is this orange little dot here, which we can see is right in the center of this. And so when I drag this from my library, I don't want this to be sitting at the center. I want the origin to be at the bottom so I can drop it directly onto the floor. And so to fix an asset like this, what we need to do is here if we go into edit mode by typing tab on our keyboard, here I'm going to go to a front view. I'm going to type A to select all of the geometry in this asset. And then I'm going to type G and then Z to move this up. And so we just basically want this to sit right on top of the origin point here. And so with that done here, if we wanted to, we could see how that's going to look by setting the location back to zero. We can see that's right on the floor. So with that done, we'll go back to Home Builder here, and let me create a new category called Music Equipment. We'll click OK. So now with that category active here, let's go ahead and click Save Selected Object to Library. Here we have the Marshall Amp. Make sure Auto Save is turned on. We'll click OK. Okay, and so now when we're adding this in from the library, we can see that the position point is right where that base point is. So if you're creating a new asset or if you downloaded something from BlendSwap or something along those lines, just make sure you check to see where the object base point is. That way you have a very easy way of placing that in from your library. 
So next, let's go ahead and save this drum set to the music equipment category. And if we take a look at this, we'll see that there's a lot more objects included in this asset. And here in the outliner, the outliner is quite a bit more complex. There's all these different collections and things included. And so what I like to do to make this easier is if I go to the filters menu, I can turn off the collections. And this will just show me the objects that we have in the scene. And so now I'm just gonna go and create my empty object. And then here in the outliner, I'll rename it to drums. And then I can just select these objects here and then click and then drag them to set the parent here. Since I don't have the collections visible, I don't have to hold shift. I can just drag all of these objects into this one base point. And so now when I click on my base point in type G, you can see I'm moving this entire asset around. And that's what we wanna see. So with that done, we can now click and save that to the object. We can include the child objects. We can see there's 64 of them in this asset and we'll click okay. And there we have it. Now it's saved all of those objects as one asset that I can use. So now let's go and save some materials to our material library. We can save any Blender material to this library and it needs to be applied to an object. The geometry doesn't matter. We're just saving the material data. So let's go ahead and switch to material mode here and go to our materials create a new one and for this let's just do something simple we'll create a blue material and we'll call it blue and I'm also going to create a new category for this so we'll create new category we'll call it my materials and click OK so now we have the new category created and just like before all we need to do is just whatever material we have active here come to the menu and select save active material to library it'll let us know what material it's saving we click OK and there we have it. So let's just go ahead and save one more. Go ahead and change it to green. Change the name. And we'll go ahead and save this to the library as well. And so now we can just add these to any object in our scene. We'll create a new cube here. And we can just drag a material and just drop it right on top. But let's say that there's a material from an asset that we want to save. Let's go ahead and just pull our drums back into the scene here. We'll go ahead and click on one of these. Here we can save one of these materials to the library that's already configured. And so here I'm going to change this to shell inside, just change the name, and then we'll go ahead and make sure that our, that is our active material and click save active material to library and click OK. And that's all there is to it. You can have as many categories as you want for your decorations and materials and saving them to this library just gives you a really easy way to browse and add these assets to any future project that you have. So now that we have some assets saved, it's a good idea to turn them into an asset pack. This makes it easy to distribute your assets to other Home Builder users, but more importantly, since the Home Builder add-on uses the auto updater, if you have assets saved to the built-in library, it'll revert your library back to the default. And creating packs makes it so all of your assets are saved even after running updates, and it's very easy to do. So to do this, if we go to the About interface, and we click on the Installed Libraries. First, here, if we use this dropdown, this shows us all of the built-in libraries. And these are all of the libraries that get updated when you run an update. And we can see that here, there's some categories. So the My Materials, My Objects, and the Music Equipment categories are things that I just created. But right now, they're saved into the built-in library. And so if I want to create them as an asset pack, we click Create Library. And here we can see that this will show us all of the built-in libraries that we have. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just select the ones that I want. So my objects, music equipment, and my materials. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name of my assets. And then we can just select where we want this to be saved. And again, we're gonna be saving this outside of the Home Builder library. Here I have a location of where I've been creating my own packs. And so with this directory selected, going to click create new external library and if we go back into the installed libraries we'll see here we have this new asset pack and we can see that it has one material category and two decoration categories included in this pack so you can have multiple categories included in this it also shows us the location of where we saved it to but by default home builder doesn't delete the original ones and so here if we click the save settings that'll just save anything that we've added or deleted out of that library. We'll notice that here we have duplicate categories. So we have two of the my objects categories and two of the music equipment. And so all we need to do is just manually delete the 
built-in ones out of the library. If we go back to our installed libraries, here we can open up the folder in File Browser. So this will open up the Home Builder add-on where all of the built-in assets are saved. And so here we go to our decorations. These are our categories for our decorations. And all I'm going to do is just delete out the music equipment and my objects. And this just makes it so we don't have duplicate categories in there. And then the my materials. So with that done here, we might just need to refresh by clicking save settings. And so now we only have the one category that's loaded from the external asset pack. Now I have a whole bunch of different asset packs that I've created. And if you have one that you've created and you want to install it, you can click install library. And here I'll go to where my asset packs are included. And I have a iMesh pack. So I'll just click add external library. We just want to make sure that we can see where the subcategories are. And then we'll hit add external library. And let's go ahead and do another one here. I've included a polygon pack here. So I'm just going to double click that. And here this just has materials included. And so now we can see we have three asset packs. And we'll just click save settings just so they load into the interface. And here we can see that we have all sorts of different polygon uh, materials and I can't distribute these these are available because uh, I purchased these off of polygon but if you have a subscription to that you can just save the assets that you like to home builder to be used within the home builder add-on so that's all I wanted to cover in this video I'm gonna be creating a video that shows you how to create custom cabinets and save them to the library I'm also working on a series of videos that walks you through how to design your own home remodel using home builder so subscribe to the channel for notifications on when those are released. Join the Discord channel to ask questions. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.